Hi, I'm Richard Janney, a board member of the League of Women Voters. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition D, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on November 6th. The mayor, sheriff, and district attorney are elected in November of the same year. The city attorney and treasurer are elected in November of a different year. Proposition D is a charter amendment that would change the election cycle for city attorney and treasurer so that these officers would be elected at the same time as the mayor, sheriff, and district attorney beginning in 2015. I'm here with District 8 Supervisor Scott Weiner, a proponent of Proposition D, and Dr. Terrence Faulkner, an opponent of Measure D. Let's start with you, Supervisor. Um, so, uh, thanks for having me. Um, Proposition D is a uh, good government measure that will uh, increase voter turnout in our elections for city attorney and treasurer, two very important offices, and will also save the city $4.2 million um, every four years. Um, right now, we elect our city attorney and treasurer in a very, very low turnout odd year election where they are the only two offices on the ballot um, and turnout is always extremely low in that election um, and it costs us over four million dollars to hold that election. Um, Proposition D would move the city attorney and treasurer elections to be on the same ballot as the mayor which is a much higher turnout election so more people would be voting for city attorney and treasurer and every time we don't hold that very low turnout odd year election separately for city attorney and treasurer, we'll save $4.2 million. Uh, Prop D was put on the ballot unanimously by the Board of Supervisors, and it's been endorsed um, overwhelmingly by both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Okay. Dr. Faulkner, do you think this is a good idea? No, it has several problems. The original theory under the Charter of 1932 was to stagger elections so people would pay more attention to each office. In other words, elect a couple of offices each time and do it on an annual basis. This has been modified with the various charter amendments, et cetera, and new charter, um, but it's still, the theory was to stagger it because people would pay attention. The other way, theoretically, you have more people involved, but in practice, when you have those three-page long ballots on e um, printed on either side, uh, offices get lost. Um, Things like city attorney and city treasurer will get lost in the shuffle. Um, the big problem is with city governments, making sure the people actually pay attention. We've had a problem for a long time with San Francisco and dysfunctional city government. That's impinging on a number of other ballot measures that are up, like the recreation park bonds and things like that, where the Coalition of San Francisco Neighborhoods, which I'm a delegate to, um, is going against them. Um, we have a city government that's very out of touch in many ways and where, frankly, annual, annual elections would be very wise to keep the people paying attention to what's happened. We have very strong developer influence in the city government, very heavy lobbyist influence, and very little public influence. The improvement clubs and groups like that, uh, frankly, get sidelined, and then they wonder why suddenly ballot measures get opposed, especially uh, things like the Recreation Park Department bonds, which are being heavily opposed by okay. just about every group in town. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor, um, do you believe that having the elections all at one time is better for the electorate or does it get lost when you have so many positions up for election? Sure. And uh, uh, since you did raise uh, the issue of the parks bond, we're not here for that. That's the, correct. The parks bond has very overwhelming support. Um, in terms we'll of going back to Prop D, um, there's a balance to be struck. Um, I agree that if we only had, if we elected everything from president to dog catcher all in one uh, ticket, um, you know, at some point it gets to be too much. Um, but if you spread everything out too much, you know, we could have separate elections for like two offices here, two offices there, and have multiple elections um, every year. And yes, that would give more airtime to each individual election, but no one would vote. And you'd have the, um, extremely low turnout elections. So for the city attorney treasurer elections at issue here, um, even though they are, have higher prominence in their standalone odd year election, uh, when only 15, 20 percent, maybe 25 percent in a good year are actually voting uh, in that election, uh, it, the, what's, what's the point? It's getting more prominence, but no one's actually voting for it. A bad turnout for a mayoral election 
is better than a good turnout for a city attorney treasurer stand uh, standalone election. So combining those elections is a good balance in terms of increasing voter participation and improving um, our budget situation. Thank you. Dr. Faulkner, um, if we don't have a good voter turnout for the odd year of the city treasurer position, why not combine it with the rest? As I said, annual elections at least keep people paying attention. Hist history of San Francisco, which is not a good one, we've had a lot of corruption over the years, Russ Walden, uh, the roof, roof ring, all sorts of things over the years. The history of San Francisco is pretty open. Um, We've had a lot, tremendous amounts of developer influence at City Hall, tremendous amount of lobbying. The people are very much pushed out of it. Uh, we need more public participation in government. This is one of the ways. Originally, by the way, odd elections uh, were scheduled for the mayor's race. We do not elect it with president or governor for that reason. Uh, supervisors originally uh, were elected in odd years, too. Um, with the first repeal of district elections, uh, the people who did the first repeal suddenly moved it over to presidential and gubernatorial years and changed the pattern. That was the personal choice of Robert Couchard and Dr. J. Alfred Ryder, who were pushing the matter. Um, but but uh, Dr. Faulkner, excuse yes. me for a second. I, I'm trying to get back to the point here. I, yep. If we don't feel that there's sufficient voter turnout in this treasurer election cycle, why not combine it with the rest and have it all at the same time? The main por por portion is to keep people aware of it. First of all, we usually have other me measures up at the same time, including ballot measures, bonds, and all the rest. Um, usually those annual elections are important. Often they're combined with statewide elections anyway. The figure of four million he's talking about is an illusion uh, because we frequently have special elections for, for the state as well. Um, I mean, that's, that's been a very persistent thing under Schwarzenegger and under a lot of people. Thank you. Supervisor, we have a little bit of time left, and I'd like you to kind of conclude and um, give your opinion of why we think we should be voting for this. Sure. In 2001, uh, we elected uh, city attorney and treasurer in an election that had, um, I think, something like 12 or 13 percent turnout. Um, these are two very, very important positions. We should maximize turnout. Um, uh, I think it makes perfect sense to elect these positions with the mayor. I can't tell you how many people, after I proposed this at the Board of Supervisors, people on the board, off the board, came up to me and said, why didn't anyone think of this before? It makes so much sense. It'll save us money. It'll mean more people voting for city attorney and treasurer. And if that's not democracy, I don't know what is. And uh, there's a reason why this is getting such broad support. And I think it deserves the voters' uh, uh, support. Thank you. And Dr. Faulkner, um, would you please um, uh, summarize why you pe th believe people should be voting against this um, measure? It, originally, it was all odd year elections for city government, uh, the main focus. It was to have a lot of elect election stuff spread out so people would pay attention. That was the idea of the 1932 charter. Uh, it is good in the sense, uh, given the history of San Francisco and frankly, a lot of the governmental problems we had historically. Um, Getting people to pay attention to the city government has been very important. Uh, we had 1901 to 1907, a group called the Roof Ring. Uh, they described the 18 supervisors then on the board as, quote, so corrupt they'd eat the paint off the walls. And um, that's, that's the reason why you want people to pay attention to their city government. Um, frankly, the New England city governments, the small ones with town hall meetings, are the best of all. We can't do that. Uh, but we can hold annual elections and at least give people some exposure to what's happening in government. It avoids a lot of problems. We've had a lot of, frankly, honest mistakes, but bad mistakes in city government. Uh, turnaround for the Muni Railway uh, down, down at the end of the line was not built when they put in the underground. Um, that cost umpteen million dollars to have to change later on. There's been a lot of mistakes over the years made in city government because nobody's paying attention. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. We hope that this discussion was informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco League of Women Voters website at sfvotes.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you don't vote early, be sure to vote on November 6th.